by Beverly Spone Ambler. This is about my sister, Dorothy Frances Spone Deckard, and what her life was like growing up in Columbus, Ohio. We were a family of six, mom and dad, Herbert and Frances Spone, an older sister, Jean Ann, then Dorothy, a brother, Wendell, and myself, Beverly, the youngest in the family. These were the years of recovery from the Great Depression and from World War II days. Wow, that does make us sound old. Our mom was a Red Cross nurse and would go at night to roll bandages for wounded soldiers. And my sister Jean would go with her and help also. We had air raid drills when all lights were ordered off in the city to prepare in case of any of an emergency attack. We had food and gas rationings. In spite of all this, we as a family had many fun times together. When Jean and Dorothy were little, Daddy built them a playhouse made out of metal. It was painted so cute and, of course, we all got to enjoy playing in the little house. We had a three-story home in Columbus. Daddy purchased a large sheet of wood for the basement for, for where Jean and Dorothy practiced their tap dancing lessons. We also had a piano, and Jean and Dorothy were able to take piano lessons. Our dad finished the attic into a bedroom, and sitting room for Jean and Dorothy. They could play their music and have friends in to visit. Dorothy had a boyfriend in high school who was a really good dancer. They could jitterbug like you wouldn't believe. Daddy had a friend who serviced jukeboxes, and when he loaded in new re records, he would give Daddy the old 78 records. So Jean and Dorothy played a lot of music. Our family loved music, and Daddy bought a recorder to cut records. Jean, Dorothy, and I would pretend we were the Andrew sisters and sing their songs. We as a family all had felt so blessed to have been raised in a wonderful, loving, caring family, and in times when family Life togetherness was important. Mom was the matriarch of the family, taking care of our needs all along the way. She had a big responsibility and filled our hearts with love and support. It was made very clear to we siblings by observation of our parents how important family was in caring for each other as well as to our extended family and friends. We loved each other very much. I always have called Dorothy my angel sister, and my sister Jean was my amazing sister. Jean was the oldest, and like a second mother, and she looked out after her three siblings. She is assigned us duties such as washing the dishes, setting the dinner table, etc. at our summer lake house. She never quit providing for all of us up until her death, December 14, 2009. We all went to Jean for advice during our years of growing up. She was an excellent interior designer and decorated all of our houses. We were so lucky because she made our homes beautiful. When we were children, our parents bought a summer home for us on a lake in Ohio called Buckeye Lake. Now, this was not a fancy place. We had a well and pumped our own water. We also had what we called an outhouse. You might guess what that was. We had an ice box and a big block of ice was delivered regularly and put into the ice box to keep our food cold. 
we would go to the lake the day the day school was out for the summer until the day before it resumed after Labor Day. Mom had started to work at our dad's roofing sheet metal shop that our grandfather started in 1898. She ran the office part. Because of this, she hired what we called today a nanny named Annie, and she was with us at the lake and at home in Columbus for 17 years. Her parents were slaves, and Annie couldn't read or write. On a hot summer day, Mom told Annie to prepare a cold dinner. She called our mom, Miss Frances, and she said, Are you sure you want the dinner cold? So that day, she cooked a roast, mashed potatoes in the morning, and put them into the refrigerator to be cold at dinner time. Annie called us her kids. Annie did teach us how to crochet. Mom and Dad could come to the lake for the weekends. It was at Buckeye Lake where Dorothy first met her husband, to be named Bobby Deckard. They met when they were nine and eleven years old. Little did they know they would ever marry some day. The Deckards Lake House was near ours and near a public pier. All of the neighbor kids seemed to gather every day to swim, have water fights and sunbathe, and play all day. We were never bored, played hide and seek kicked the can, and just had fun, boating and swimming every day. We lived, for enough, we lived far enough from the pier that our dad installed a large dinner bell on a tall pole with a long pole cord. I think you could hear it a mile away. At mealtimes, Annie would ring that bell, big bell, which meant, Come home and eat lunch and dinner. We all had boats. Our dad, being in the sheet metal business, had made us a beautiful metal rowboat. Wendell and I could use that boat, and Dode advanced to a lineman motorboat, of which Bob also had a lineman. The two of them would go out in the lake and race each other. Dorothy evidently could beat him, so she would let him win so he wouldn't feel bad. She would tell Bob her spark plugs were tired. Bob's biggest win was when he won the lottery by marrying Dorothy many years later. After racing, they would turn their motors off and carry on a conversation with each other, sitting out in the lake holding the boats together as they talked. Wish we had a picture of that. But visually, I remember watching that take place from our pier. At this lake, there was a huge roller skating rink with music playing as we skated to the tunes hand in hand. Dorothy would zip around this rink with another cute boyfriend. How fun would have been to have these uh, small digital cameras to capture so many fun times back then. The old box cameras just didn't fit into pockets. There was also an ice cream factory that we would walk to at night, and many of us kids walked there together. There we got a gigantic banana split for 25 cents or a big ice cream cone for a nickel. Near the end of the summer, there would be a sweet corn festival, the best, the best corn you would ever find in the U.S. They also had the best of tomatoes there. They actually smelled and tasted like tomatoes. So good. The biggest attraction at Buckeye Lake was a big amusement park that had three big dance ballrooms. 
these were the years after the war when the big bands came into play. We also had a Chris Craft speedboat, and Mom and Dad would take us all to the park by boat. Jean and Dorothy were old enough to go to the ballrooms to listen to the bands. Wendell and I, with Mom and Dad, would sometimes stay in the boat, floating with the engine turned off, listening to the music by the ballrooms. These bands that would come to Buckeye Lake happened to be Tommy Dorsey, Gene Krupa, Glenn Miller, Benny Goodman, and others. At the time, we didn't realize these bands would become very famous. Another neighbor at the lake was a Hollywood producer. We played with his kids. He would sometimes bring stars like Buster Crab, who played Tarzan in the movies. He also brought in Spike Jones to play for his daughter's birthday party. He put on a cookout for about 75 of us neighbors around the lake. So jumping ahead, Dode and Bob got together when they were older, began to date, and married in 1950. They went to college together, Bob graduating in pharmacy and Dorothy in business administration. Bob had a pharmacy drugstore in Columbus, and in Columbus they began a family of five, Melanie, David, Margie, Dan, and Tim. Dorothy was a was pretty busy mother, as you could imagine. Dorothy and Bob moved to Charlotte in 1978 with their five children and really enjoyed this beautiful city. Spending time with close friends, boating on these lakes, and doing many fun things together. They enjoyed many years together as a family as her children related some of these stories about their t times together. As time moved on, Dan and his wife, Dawn, provided Dorothy with a granddaughter, Danielle, with whom she was able to spend a lot of time with, and they had a very special relationship. Her family has grown with the marriages by Melanie to Steve, where Melanie acquired two children, David and wife Jody, with a son they raised, Dustin, Tim and Mayer, and he acquired a son, Remy. So she had an extended family that kept growing, and she enjoyed them all. Dorothy worked as a medical secretary in Columbus and also worked at the Center of Science and Industry. In Charlotte, she was a certified nurse assistant at Presbyterian Hospital for 11 years. She was a secretary for her son, Dan, in Dan's heating and air conditioning business for 10 years and many other jobs here and there over the years. Dorothy enjoyed life to its fullest. She was the essence of beauty, happiness, and joy always having a positive attitude. To me, she was one of the God's angels on earth. As sisters go, we were like three peas in a pod. We were blessed having a brother we were proud of. And Doe was able to spend a lot of time with he and his family that lived close by in Salisbury. My husband Al was like another brother to Dorothy. They were very fond of each other. We had some very fun trips together in our RV with Bob and Sally not joining us. As we traveled many places in our country, Dorothy had many close friends that had been there for her, especially the Durbecks and the Williams family. We will miss her immensely but very happy to know that now she is with the rest of all her loved ones that have preceded her already into their heavenly home. We can now rejoice 
for her eternal life. I was the last one to join our family at birth, and now I will be the last to join the family in our eternal home. Revelation 21 Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be twelve thousand stadia in length, and as wide and high as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement, and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper, and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. 1 Corinthians 13 If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, 
but do not have love? I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love.